Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this Saturday night, December 30th, 2023. It's about 10.35 p.m. here. California time and latest activity shows a 2.5 on the Big Island of Hawaii. That is where the uh, latest activity is occurring, as we can see here on the seismograph station there. On the Hot Caves Hawaii station, showing that 2.5 coming in right now as we speak. Looking at the last 12 hours of earthquake activity out here on the Big Island does show uh, some movement. Not quite as active as what we've seen last night and uh, this morning. We did see quite a bit of uh, fluid movement. Uh, that's kind of what this activity right here looks like. Some magma movement stirring up down below. Uh, still looking at uh, the potential of an eruption out here. Not, uh, not yet, but it's definitely, I think, in the near future. Last 30 days of uh, inflation data out here does show the continued inflation levels here across the summit region of Kilauea Volcano. Although in the last, oh, the last day here, we've noticed a little decline uh, in terms of inflation. But uh, still, I think there is that possibility uh, with this continued uptick in earthquake activity uh, to see an eruption here soon. Exactly when? We will have to see. We are getting a little bit of earthquake activity here across the southeastern rift zone. Uh, just here in a little separate area. Um, I'm still thinking here that the most likely area uh, to see some fissure activity open up is going to be out here around the region of the old 1974 uh, vents south of the crater area. That's where all the earthquake activity has been uh, accumulated. And that's kind of where all the... Um, the uplift, so to speak, uh, is taking place out there. Uh, so it's uh, definitely something to watch pretty closely. Uh, look at the seismograph or the uh, webcam out here. Well, I can't really see too much because it's kind of dark out there right now. But we'll continue to watch that report back on any major changes. Although, again, elevated earthquake activity, high inflation levels, uh, eruption uh, possible soon out there. All right, let's go ahead and check out the west coast here, lighten up slightly. Uh, a couple of earthquakes out here in the uh, Cobb Mountain region, just south of Clear Lake. Hydrothermal fields out here looks like uh, fairly active. And uh, getting a little swarming going on here in the last hour around the Reno, Nevada area. Uh, a couple of earthquakes up there. As you can see in the last hour, the red circles. And also prior to that, uh, I've seen a handful of earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. So nothing big. These are all just a little... Uh, a couple small microquakes, but it is rather interesting to see this type of activity stir up out here um, all of a sudden. Uh, this could be leading to something on the bigger side. I do want to double check here uh, historical data out here. So stand by for a second while I pull up uh, earthquake activity out here around the Reno area in the last, uh, oh, we'll just go back to the year 1000. It's not really going to take us back to the year 1000, but. Uh, um, that should cover at least as uh, far as historical records go. And not really worried about south of here, north of here, east or west, but I'm just more concerned with what's going on specifically out here across the Reno Sparks area, uh, Sun Valley region as well. Let's see what we got. I typed in 5.0 and above, and uh, well, it looks as though... Is there two earthquakes in there? Looks like there may be two earthquakes. Uh, a 6.0 back in February, 1914. Uh, it's a pretty good size earthquake. And then a 6.4 a couple months later, 1914. Uh, but as you can see, that's you know that that's about the only earthquake activity out there in terms of 5.0 and above, specifically around this area. That little earthquake swarm is occurring just north of this region, but. Uh, that's some good shaking. If we were to see a 6.4 out there today, that I don't know if I'd want to be in any of those casino uh, hotels out there. That'd be a little swaying going on. But um, keep an eye on that. Definitely uh, uh, looking like we may see some potential activity stirring up out here. Um, not all the time, but sometimes when we do get these little earthquake swarms, uh, it could be a key indicator here of... Uh, some potential larger scale movement about ready to take place here. I'm not for sure which fault system this uh, activity is occurring on. Um, it's really not marked all that well here on the on the uh, map. 
but I'm sure uh, there's some fault systems that do run out here. I remember reading an article here a while back. I'll have to see if I can bring that back up of uh, the uh, potential for some large earthquake activity out there around Reno. So just a heads up, you know, you're, you guys are away from the plate boundary where we see most of the activity, but uh, a six pointer out there, 6.4 uh, or maybe something larger. Uh, yeah, that would not be good. Definitely not. So we'll keep an eye on that area across Reno, Nevada, and uh, further down south. Not a whole lot of activity here across Southern California today. Just a handful of smaller microquakes out there in the region. Uh, getting a little handful of earthquakes up here in the Washington area as well. Also Mount St. Helens. We'll go ahead and cover that real quick. Uh, we'll go over to the uh, Trimmer map. Check this here real quick. See what we got. 20 epicenters of Trimmer, Southern Oregon. Not that big of a deal. Um, let's go over to the volcanic activity here across Mount St. Helens. Uh, there's a couple of those small earthquakes here in the last two hours. Uh, doesn't look like we're seeing anything major going on here. A quick glance at the uh, seismograph station here up at the dome station. Uh, that will give us a, a view of what's going on. It looks like some of those earthquakes right here, very small in the static in the background of this seismograph station uh, data here. So I, I don't see anything really of uh, concern. It looks like maybe there's maybe a couple more out there as well in the previous day, UTC time. Um, very small though. Like I say, the USGS reporting these as a, uh, uh, where'd they go here? That's that page. I'm go back here. Very small earthquakes, uh, below the 1.0 threshold. In fact, uh, 0.1 and a 0.6 out here on the Southwestern flank. It looks like, but nothing big going on. We did see a little bit of swarming, uh, a couple months back in this area, but it looks like things, you know, it's kind of slowed down. I mean, a couple earthquakes there, not that big of a deal currently. Uh, before we skip over Yellowstone, I want to double check that here. It is a weekend. So if there's a major swarm going on, we probably wouldn't even know about it. Um, unless we double check these seismograph stations and I'm really not seeing much showing up here across the area right now. Texas though, on the other hand, definitely getting a, quite a bit of swarming going on out here in the oil fields outside of Pecos, Texas. Uh, just been an active, active year out there in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, look at the big picture here. Still seeing some movement out here in the Papua New Guinea area, Solomon Islands. This area filling in quite nicely as it has been our quiet zone here over the past few days. Uh, we haven't really seen anything big out here specifically in this zone. Yes, we did see a 6.3 earlier this morning. Uh, but for this quiet area around here, uh, looks like we got a couple fives and some fours stirring up out here. Again, this area has been pretty quiet. Uh, there might be a small little section here that may still show some further movement. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. Uh, a look at the earthquake 3D globe out here. Shows some of that movement stretching across the Indonesia Islands area and the Java Trench up through the Philippines here. And some smaller earthquake activity up here across the Kurokama Chaka and the Japan Trench. Got to watch this area. Uh, definitely capable of seeing some large mega quakes up here in this area. Although uh, nothing spectacular going on right now. We did see some larger activity a couple days ago, roughly within this same spot. That's 6.5. 6.5 is uh, a large earthquake, no doubt, but this area, the subduction zone, uh, very capable of producing uh, earthquakes well above seven pointer and up into the eight and even higher range across the subduction zone. So just keep an eye out. Still seeing a little bit of movement here today, uh, specifically in that zone where that 6.5 struck. Uh, look in the Alaska area, some very small microquake activity. A handful of uh, stuff above 2.5 as well. Looks to be uh, 3.7, the largest quake here. Back prior to the subduction zone out here in the Pacific Plate for a 3.7. But uh, aside from that, typical movement up there. Um, looks like it froze up here. Oh, man. I'm going to back that window out. Uh, hopefully, I'm not being attacked again. It's kind of weird. Every time... Uh, Every time I do an update, I get some weird stuff going on. Look at that variable KB bitrate right there. It was bouncing down for a little bit. Hopefully, I'm not being uh, attacked right now from um, an unknown source. My dark fan, so to speak. Uh, so hopefully that holds steady. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, let's see what else we got here. 
Puerto Rico area. A handful, handful of earthquakes up here as well. Looks like a couple twos. Uh, but aside from that, uh, let's see. Anything major going on out here on the earthquake 3D globe? Aside from the typical activity, this is just 24 hours of earthquake activity here. Um, oh, we've got a new five-pointer down here in the South Sandwich Trench, it looks like. The area's been uh, rocking and rolling pretty nicely here in the last couple days. Uh, filling in that little gap here. I think with that zone, seen a, a little gap here. There was a region in the south and a region in the north that was seeing uh, some activity starting to fill in a little bit here in this little quiet seismic gap zone. Uh, but we'll continue to keep an eye on that uh, for some movement. Definitely looks like it wants to move a little bit more. Um, see what else we got here. I want to keep an eye on these seismograph stations here because I almost feel like something's coming there across the Hawaii area. Definitely been uh, showing a lot of earthquake activity here recently. Iceland, well, Iceland looks to be our quiet zone for now. Uh, let me double check though before I spit those words out okay 24 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours that's not a huge amount and specifically around the green area only seeing two earthquakes and uh, it's really not a lot of uh, activity currently stirring up here but you know don't uh don't get caught off guard because there is still the potential to things for things to ramp up here uh, in terms of earthquake activity and new fissure development out here across the region uh, around the Green Devec area northward, so just keep an eye on it. But for now, earthquake activity at a minimal stage. Real quick glance here at space weather activity here before I get booted off. Um, okay, um, let's see what do we got here for space weather activity. Uh, a whole lot of nothingness, it looks like. I mean, there is a coronal hole facing us. Uh, it has been for a couple days. It's now starting to drift off here across the western limb of the sun. It looks like maybe we will see a little bit of elevated conditions here in the next couple days, but I'm really not expecting much in terms of the aurora potential out here. It looks like maybe 20 to 40% over the next couple days as we head into the new year. Uh, sunspot activity and solar flare activity, as you can see, is very minimal with only an isolated isolated threat there for some sea flare activity and in flare uh, development but i'm really not expecting much 35 34 uh, is about the only sunspot here that's worth mentioning and even so well it doesn't hold a lot of potential there for any strong flaring and we do have a newer sunspot way out there on the eastern limb we'll have to keep an eye on right now too early to see or say what's going on with this sunspot region but we'll definitely keep an eye on it folks a uh, quick glance at the numerical models out here as we head into the new year i want to show you guys the precipitation map out here over the next uh, couple runs or so you can see the west coast uh, getting in on some further moisture as we head into the new year looks like the south is going to pick up quite a bit of rain down here very typical in an el nino pattern um southern california hopefully we get uh you know you've seen a lot of rain here recently but hopefully we keep the storms coming out here to the west coast we got a lot of colder storms coming down out of the north here as we enter into the uh, uh january time period so those aren't really s soaking wet they're they're cold a lot of cold air but uh, limited precipitation uh, so hopefully this will change doesn't look like a lot of accumulation here uh, in the sacramento valley where i live of california uh, for this run, but hopefully it will change. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. All right. Um, keep an eye on Reno. That's a, uh, you know, that's a lot of earthquake activity here just in one hour, seven kilometers deep uh, for the majority of this earthquake activity. Um, I'll have to look around, see if I can find that uh, article I read about this and I'll bring it up tomorrow in the, in the update, but uh, it's a little bit of swarming going on there. A little suspicious, so stay safe out there. We will catch you guys back here tomorrow morning, which will be the last day of 2023. Goodness. We'll see you guys back there then.